Hey guys, Chris from the Ultimate Recycler. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the shop. Uh, we've just closed up for the day. It's been a fairly quiet Friday. Christine's gone home, but I'm gonna do an unboxing for you guys. I've gotta get through some of this stuff I've stashed away. So come with me and I'll show you what I'm gonna do. When we had to move my shop, we shoved things everywhere. So this counter has, uh, it's actually in the shop. It's on the way to the kitchen area, which is um, just sort of staff only, but Underneath this counter, we just shoved all sorts of stuff, you know, I had people helping me move things. Um, everyone was saying, where do you want this? Where do you want that? And I'm basically just saying, find a spot. We'll sort it out later. So I have sorted some of this. I did have some bookwork in some of these tubs. Uh, and now I'm getting a bit more organized as we free up the tubs. I've got a little area for my scrap metal stuff, which I find at the shop when I'm sorting out stuff. Uh, I've also got some... Uh, mid-grade circuit boards when I scrap some things here. There's a tub for the old batteries, which I'll take to the transfer station. Uh, so I'm gradually working along this area, sorting out. And the next box is that one. Uh, I don't know what's in it. I haven't pulled it out yet. I think it's tools. Um, it, it's heavy. And I didn't put it here, and I'm not sure where it's come from. The code on it I don't think applies to it. I think it was just a box that was reused. And I can see a drill, a Bosch drill. Okay, pardon the terrible polystyrene squeaks. All right, we have a bit of an assortment. There's not a lot of stuff, so I don't think this will be a long video. We obviously have a Bosch drill, which I don't need, so we'll test that out and sell it. A bit of other, uh, yeah, a few other random bits. Let's get it up on the counter and we'll go through it. So I'm really enjoying these unboxings. Uh, not only am I finding stuff that I forgotten I owned I'm actually finding a lot of stuff that I didn't know I owned and it's fun going through them with you guys it helps me keep motivated and I'm finding some good stock for the shop so this is a, a quite a good Bosch drill it's probably a 1970s one looking at the plug uh, it's been well used but still should have a good resale we'll take that home and put it on our appliance tester and just make sure it's safe and give it a bit of a test. So I will take that one home. We'll work out a price for that one later. I certainly don't keep need to keep any more drills, especially now that I've got my um, Makita cordless range. Now this is a, many of you will recognize this. It's a meat mincer, very common items. It's got a couple of spare cutter blades. Uh, it's designed, if you haven't seen one, it's designed to clamp on a kitchen bench and I can't actually crank it because the blades are all wrapped up here. And basically you mince meat with it, you crank the handle, it has a worm drive in there, you can put different size cutters on the end, and uh, yeah, it's designed to mince meat. Some people still use them for fishing burley, or if they make their own sausages at home. Uh, they're made out of cast iron. This one's in pretty good condition, it's probably English made. And they sell quite well. Uh, I would expect to get $25 for that, without any problems. It doesn't really even need much. Perhaps just a little bit of a clean up. I'll take these cutters off and um, reattach them a bit neater so that people can actually turn the handle. And that'll go in our kitchen department. We'll easily get $25 for that one. So it'd be nice to do a list out of this box too. I might have to do a bit of research on some of it. This one is a, I think it's called, a, it's a geologist's pick. Uh, it's East, East Wing, which is a really well-known, or at least will a really, uh, quality hammer brand that I know of. I know they made good claw hammers, carpenters hammers. Um, it's got a rubberized handle grip, which is still quite good. The steel will be great quality steel in it. That really doesn't need much of a clean up other than I might just give it a bit of a wash and just rub a bit of steel wool over it just to present it a bit nice, more nicely. I will check eBay on that one, but I would think that's probably a $50 item. Uh, not that I know many geologists, but uh, I have had these in the shop before and they do tend to sell. It might even be worth eBaying. But uh, we'll give that a clean up and do a check on that one. All right, this box won't take us very long. We have some clamps. There's a G clamp. And there's another one. I think it's the same brand. And I'm taking those home because one can never have enough clamps. Uh, Christa and I had a bit of a joke. We were watching some guy on YouTube doing a lot of woodwork and, and repairing. Oh, he was actually doing some restoration work on a 300 year old barn in France. Really interesting, very good craftsmanship. And they've got a row of woodwork clamps as long as what my shed is. So 
if you do any woodwork, you, you can never have enough clamps. A lot of those were the ratchet style ones. This is obviously the old style G clamp. It's um, made in Australia. Lock. High tensile forging rolled thread. Looks like a really good quality Aussie made clamp. I would expect that they would probably be a $20 each clamp. Uh, certainly going to be a lot better steel than what you'd buy these days, but they will be going home. Well, I'll write down 20 bucks each on them. I don't think I'd have any troubles getting that for them. Uh, the biggest thing in this box is a car jack. Now, this is the old scissor style car jack. It's probably a Japanese vehicle, maybe a Toyota. I think they were fitted with lots of different cars. Um, vehicle model code. Oh, Honda Civic, Accord, Prelude, and Quintet. Uh, it's probably 1980s, maybe 90s. I'd have to look up when the Honda Accords came out. Uh, it does give the model, so I should be able to date it from there. I will check eBay, only that car stuff, as it gets older, people, uh, and, and as the model of car becomes collectible, people want to dress it up with the original kit. Now, it's quite possible. I don't think Honda Accords are collectible by any means, but... Once they start getting older, people like to have them with all their original accessories. Uh, that We don't have the handle for it's any trouble, but a lot of times these were just a bent rod with a, um, a kind of a, a bit of a kink and a handle thing at the end. I reckon I'll check eBay. If I don't find any um, results there, I'm going to put it in the shop for $10. Um, it looks like it's in good order. The thread's not damaged. It's probably like a lot of car jacks that may have only ever been used once or twice. So, um, yep, it's a useful item, even if you don't want to put it back in a car. But I'd say 10, but we will do some checking. Okay, we're at the bottom of the box already. This is a, a foot valve from a, a water pump. Uh, often these were attached to the end of a long piece of poly pipe and hung in the dam or something when farmers were pumping out of a dam or in a channel. Obviously, it's it's got a one-way valve in it so that, uh, so that you don't have to prime the pump each time as it sucks water out and up the line. The valve here closes so the water can't flow back down the line and out, which means that next time you go to start the pump, the suction line's already full of water. Obviously, a little bit of a, a filter here to so it doesn't suck up fish and reeds and any other stuff that's likely to be sucked into the pump. So it's a solid brass. It's actually made in, oh, it says Warrnambool, Victoria. So it's Australian made. Uh, I think it's probably worth more than brass. Now, the thing weighs, if I can just do an estimate, I reckon it weighs at least a kilo, probably a kilo and a half. Uh, the price of brass these days, that's about $10 just for brass. But I think uh, a farmer may find that useful. It's still going to be in working order. So $10, I'm not going to scrap it. I think we'll put 20 on it in the shop. Okay, this is an interesting and dangerous looking item. It's a meat cleaver. It's uh, branded Henry Bocker, which I think is German. I've had tools, or at least woodwork tools, with Henry Bocker on them. Uh, it's going to be really good quality steel. It actually feels quite sharp. Uh, it's been used and abused a bit. Uh, someone's hammered on the top and flared it out a little bit. That could be dressed up with a file. Probably the original handle. Uh, I think that's it's just got some really light surface rust on it, but it actually would clean up quite well. I'll again check eBay. I use eBay completed items a lot for valuations. Even if I don't find the exact thing, it just gives me a guide. And I will do a video on that one time. I might have done one a long time ago, but it's a great resource for valuing things. Um, my gut feeling on that, it's probably a $50 item. Good German quality, undamaged other than a little bit of thing, uh, abuse there that could be dressed up. I'll estimate 50, we'll do a check. So this little box, even though it doesn't have many things in it, it's going to add up to a, a bit of value. We have some shears, some straight bladed shears, appear to be in good order. Actually, they feel quite good. A little bit of surface rust. There will be a brand on those somewhere. They're going to be of reasonable quality. They've got a bit of age to them. I'll give them a little bit of a scrub up with steel wool and soapy water. 
uh, and see if we can find a brand because if it does say England or German or uh, Germany or something, I reckon it makes them a ten dollar set of shears. If we can't find any brand, maybe five. So it's worth a quick wash to see that. We have a spanner or a wrench. It's a Sid Chrome. It will be an Australian one. Uh, one inch AF that end, 15 sixteenths that end. It's uh, Sid Chrome spanners are quite collectible and they sell very well. They're great quality tools. However, this these open enders and the larger sizes are actually quite difficult to sell. There's just not the um, the demand for them, but it's worth cleaning up. That will clean up really nicely. The chrome will polish up quite well just with a little bit of fine steel wool. Uh, it has got a little bit of plating loss and someone's engraved a V on there. Perhaps it belonged to Vince uh, or Veronica. Who knows? Um, I think I, I could probably put 10. It might take a while to sell, but we'll go 10 bucks on that one. Okay, what do we got here? This is... Um, a little vice. It looks like it's had a piece broken out of it. Uh, yeah, it's got some issues. All right, that's a shame. Um, yeah, the thread part's okay, but it's broken some of the casting off underneath. So that's really not that useful now. It's a shame because it probably would have easily got twenty dollars. A little bench-mounted vice. Uh, someone might like to try and repair it somehow it's not something i'm going to tackle so i think we'll just put five uh yeah we'll just put five dollars on that as a restoration project for someone the thread's okay it does wind up but yeah it's, it's broken some of the housing underneath so what did i say five dollars yeah someone will buy that for a project okay there's little bits of polystyrene everywhere here that looks like uh, a nail puller, is my guess, or a staple puller. Um, it's basically just a little claw on the end, and it lifts so that you can lever with it. Handy for pulling out tacks. Uh, and I do have some picture frame restorations to do at home, and there's a lot of staples and tacks, so I might take that one home. Value-wise, though, I would say clean up. It should clean up nicely. The handle's good. It's not split. It's probably an English piece. Can't see any brands on it. Uh, I think we'll go $5 as far as value. All right, two more items. Fancy that, a review mirror. Just what we needed. Uh, I don't know what it's off. It looks 1960s era. It, sorry, I'm getting you with the reflected light. The bracket here looks like a die cast or a, a cast zinc. Uh, it's got a swivel ball. So, and it does move okay. The back of it looks to be an aluminium. And it's got... Oh, okay. Oh, it's got a day-night rocker switch. That's interesting. I haven't seen one that rocks like that. That's very cool. I have a suspicion it's maybe something like a, a Valiant Chrysler. I don't think it's Holden. If it's Holden, we should, should see a GMH symbol on there. I think I'll give it a little bit of a clean up. I might check eBay. The mirror part itself is quite good. Car parts can sell really well, and same as with the jack. If someone's restoring an old car, you know, they, they would like to have the proper rear vision mirror. I'm thinking $20, but I will do some checking on that, see if I can identify what model it's off. Last piece in the box. Okay, this. You know what? It's. I'm not going to tell you what this is. I'm going to put this in the next mystery item box. Value wise, it's. I can tell you that it's incomplete. Value wise, um, oh, it says what it is. Hopefully, you couldn't read it. Value wise, I'm going to put ten dollars on that. I get them fairly often. Sometimes I get the other part with them, uh, but that's all I'm going to tell you. And I'm going to tell you it's worth ten dollars. And that's it, We'd, we have emptied another box. Just at home in my shed now, and I'll give this Bosch drill a bit of a test. I've got my appliance tester here. Uh, I've checked the cord out. The cord appears to be undamaged. It's got the chuck key attached to the cord. The plug's an older style, but it doesn't look damaged. So everything checks out as far as the machine goes. we are just got to see if it works and how well it runs and make sure it's safe. Uh, so 
we'll plug it in and put it through its paces. Okay, I'll plug it into the appliance tester, uh, power it up, and it tells me that it's a pass. Um, it says the earth has failed, but it doesn't have an earth. It's actually, if you look at the symbol on, where's the symbol? Oh, you can't read much of the tag, but that square within a square uh, means it is double insulated, so it doesn't run an earth wire. Even though it does have an earth pin on the plug, there's no actual earth wire that goes to the machine. Uh, so let's power it up. That sounds really good actually. Now it's a two speed drill, I'm not sure how you change speeds, it seems very stiff there. Oh there we go. So it's got a two speed gearbox in it. That's working well. Let's try it in a bit of wood. Excellent, that's great. There's lots of torque. That's a good drill. I reckon we can probably put, oh, uh, let's not be greedy. Let's just put $20 on it, maybe 25. Now that we've tested it, I'll write out a tag for it and uh, attach that to the cable. So I think given that it's going to be tested and tagged, we could probably ask 25 for it quite safely. Let's give it a little clean up on the chuck. They always look nicer if the metal's not rusty. Um, so if we actually lock the the trigger on. Little bit of a cheat there, but it looks a lot nicer. And there we go. Safety tested and tagged. And I've changed my mind on the 25. I'm going to go for 30 bucks. Have a look how nicely that chuck cleaned up. It looks great. Okay, back at the shop now, and let's just finalise this little um, box lot. I haven't found out what the mirror suits. So I did uh, place some photos on some Facebook groups, and no one has been able to identify it. At least no one's volunteered any information that can help me. So I'm going to price it at $20. I think it'll sell at that. It does have a bit of a scratch in the glass there. A bit hard to see there. And also it is a little dented in at the top there. It's been kinked over or something. But it's probably still usable. Um, I think we'll get 20 for it. We'll see how we go. Uh, these shears were English made. I cleaned up the jaws here. And you probably won't be able to pick this in the camera because it's a little bit pitted. But it does say Sheffield, England. It's probably upside down actually. Anyway, I think they're worth 10. They operate quite nicely. The, oh, I only left this out to show you how nicely the meat cleaver cleaned up and you can see a trademark there, crossed arrows or at least a cross with an arrow through it. So a nice piece that one, I'm sure we'll get our 50, I think I put 55 allowing for people to haggle. I usually do that, if I want 50 for something I'll put 55 and people will say will you take 50 and I'll say sure. And sometimes I say will you take 30 and I say no. <laughs> Uh, the spanner, I put 10 on it, but I just thought I'd show you how nicely it cleaned up. And all I did was just some fine steel wool in some soapy water, and it just polishes polishes them up really nicely. So we should get 10 for that. Uh, I did originally say $5 for this. Uh, I think it's actually a tack remover. Um, and it is English made. It's nicely branded. Cleaned up really well. Uh, I'm taking it home still, uh, definitely, even Christine thought it might be handy for removing tax from upholstery jobs. Uh, I probably should have said $10 on it, so I've upped the price from 5 to 10 but I am taking that one home. So that brings us to the notepad. Let's scan through here. Uh, price is pretty well as mentioned. I did up the price on the Honda Carjack. I checked eBay and there was quite a lot on there and every one of them sold and they're quite heavy. So they were selling for $20 and $30 plus postage. So I've upped that to $20 in the shop. I think that'll sell quickly. The brass foot valve, I did put a note on screen that it was 1.3 kilos. So um, I wasn't bad with my guess there. So we'll try it for 20. Uh, other things as mentioned, I think. Uh, so that brings us to a total of $300.
Who would have thought there was $300 in that little box? $300 of value. And the box, as you saw, wasn't chock a block full of stuff. It was fairly sparse. But some really good gear for the shop. A few things to take home. Of course, the G clamps as well. Uh, a couple of nice items, the meat cleaver and the geologist's pick we put 50 odd each on. So allowing for a couple of discounts, we're going to clear $270, $280 from another mystery box of random tools. So thanks for watching, guys. Another box unpacked. I hope you've enjoyed these videos. I've got lots more to do. And $300 from one box, there's obviously going to be boxes that are a lot less, but there's going to be boxes that are more. So I'm looking forward to getting through some more of them. We'll see you for another one soon. Bye for now.